thinking about building a custom GPT, then here is what so many people get wrong and what you need to know before you start. And I wanna clarify that building custom GPTs isn't technically hard. I'm gonna demystify the whole process for you, but there is a process that you need to follow in order to set them up the right way so that they're actually gonna create the results that you want. Hey, I'm Joe Wise and I'm a marketing consultant and AI systems are a huge part of my workflows these days. It is so cool what we can do with this technology and I love how it is so self-serve so you can really take radical responsibility for your growth because there's so many different tools that you can leverage. Like how exciting is it that the barrier to entry and actually do well is so much lower for entrepreneurs now. And like any other technology that has ever been new before, I've noticed that there are so many people that are not using AI tools to the best of its ability. Like there is so much you can get your chat GPT to do that is more impactful than editing your marketing email or writing your newsletter for this week. And one simple thing that makes the outputs generated by your AI tools like chat GPT is actually using custom GPTs instead of the default chat. I did an entire video about this that people are really liking, so I can link that too. But if you are gonna go the route of building custom GPTs, there are a few things that you need to know in order to set them up so that they actually do give you the results that you want. Because while yes, it is as simple as putting in a prompt and giving it a knowledge base, the quality of that system prompt and configuration and the knowledge base that you give it is directly going to impact the quality of the results it generates. So this video is about the three things that you need to know before you start building custom GPTs. And I'm gonna to try to simplify the entire thing so that it's like in plain speak. So that even if you are not a techie person, I bet you can figure this out. I think it's pretty clear, but I love using custom GPTs both within my own business, but also for clients. And on the client side, there are areas where I'm using custom GPTs in the work that I'm leading. And then there's ones that I've actually built to help clients self-serve. So rather than them needing to rely on me to write every single marketing email now, they have their own email marketer trained or a blog writer trained or an offboarding assistant. Like there's so many things that we can do that help accelerate and elevate all of these workflows within their business. So I love custom GPTs, but that leads to my first point, which is that you need to know what workflow you want your custom GPT to fit into. So you really need to start with a clear workflow. Your custom GPT should support a system that you already have or you know that you need. That's where it's gonna make the most impact if you have this pain already. So some people get overwhelmed because they're like, oh, I need all of these systems, but you actually don't need it all right away. I am a big fan of building the plane as we fly so we can chip away once we know what your priorities are. So if you sit down and you look at all of the workflows that happen within a typical week in your business, you can pick the one that's gonna save you the most time, it's gonna help you elevate the process for your clients, or it's just gonna help you bring in more money because that's really what you need to be thinking of when you want business growth in the long run. So just because you could automate it all or you could build all of these custom AI tools for your business doesn't mean that you need to do it all right now or that you should because that is a huge task to tackle. Instead, pick the one that's gonna make the biggest impact today or this week which probably will lead you to the question of where do I start like how do I know what is going to make the biggest impact how do I know what to prioritize honestly choosing priorities is one of the biggest things that I do with clients because there's so much that we could do especially as entrepreneurs as founders like we know that we could do 10 20 different things we are skilled we are driven we know we could do it all so how do you know which one makes the most sense right now I want you to ask yourself two things to start and that is what are you doing on repeat throughout your days and weeks? And the second one is what are the bottlenecks that are slowing you down? Now I'm gonna give you some examples of this. First, for myself, I found that one of the things that was really slowing me down, whether I was doing it or if I had somebody who was junior helping me with it, was repurposing my YouTube videos into blog posts. I have my YouTube strategy, I have my outlines, I have my videos, I prioritize that, and then my email list is also really high on my priority list. And then at the same time, I have my keyword research and my blog optimization strategy to get more traffic coming in from search engines. But I was struggling to find the time personally to turn all my good video content into actually specific targeted, really good blog posts. It was just wasting hours of my time. I've tried having other people do it as well, but I felt like it still was just taking too long for the type of work that it is. When really, I want my blog posts to be very similar to the YouTube videos. I know that I get in depth with every single video that this could become a really strong blog post and it doesn't need too much extra in there, but it does need to be in a different format for it to show up on Google versus it to show up on the YouTube algorithm. And well, yes, of course there is some overlap. It's just, it's a different format. So I wanted it to be done right if I was gonna be doing it and I didn't wanna waste a lot of time on it. 
So enter my YouTuber purpose or GPT. I love this one. I named it like I name all of them. My content repurposer is actually called Cove, so that's fun. Um, and this GPT is great because it can take my transcript from my YouTube video, my notes that I use to put it together, all of my keyword research and my keyword strategy from my blogs, and actually put it together in a format that really fits the quality of blog posts that I wanna be putting out. And that is because it has a really strong knowledge base, it has good examples to draw from, it has a specific workflow, including I've told it to tell me if there are gaps missing. So if there are areas where I can make the blog post even stronger, and maybe I didn't cover all of these in the YouTube video because sometimes I don't really have lengthy notes here. So sometimes I'm missing stuff in the YouTube videos, but it could be more in depth than the blog. So I have it, so I've trained it to tell me when there are gaps that I could actually fill in to make this blog post perform even better and really just be more helpful for anyone who's reading over there. So that's one workflow that I have sped up exponentially. I've also given the examples before of the copywriting GPTs that I've built for my clients, which helps them accelerate the process because they're not struggling to do it on their own. They don't have to pay for juniors to write it for them and they don't have to pay me a premium to do it every single time. I often still oversee the work that it generates, but it really accelerates the process for them. It allows them to self-serve a lot more and get things done faster, therefore move faster, therefore grow faster. So it's really cool. And the last example that I'll give you here of how I took a pain point and turned it into a workflow based GPT is that I noticed when people are asking their clients for testimonials, one of two things happen most of the time. It's that either the client or customer stresses about what to say and then they don't actually end up writing anything or it takes them a really long time to write it because they're so worried that they wanna to put together something really good for you but they just don't feel confident in like knowing how to write that testimonial. Or the second thing that happens is that they write something but it's actually really generic. So they'll say something like, so and so was amazing, I loved working with them, everyone should work with them, which sounds great but it's actually not helpful because when you are writing copy and optimizing something like your website copy or a sales funnel or a marketing email, you always want your testimonials and your case studies to support what you are saying in your copy. So if you are making specific promises in your copy, you want your testimonials to back that up as well. At the same time, you wanna have testimonials that actually represent the people who are reading the copy so that people can start to see themselves and the clients and customers that you have and the wins that they have from that. So a specific example of what I mean by this, not to get too much into the weeds, would be that my sales page for my marketing consulting talks about how my clients make their money back almost immediately and they get that return because we're actually doing impactful work. And then I have a testimonial that says I two times my income within three months of working with Joe. So that way it's actually a good testimonial to back up your message. So this GPT that I've designed now can collect testimonials that are actually good, that are metric based and that are going to pull out the important things from what people wanna say and help them write it. So they don't even need to think about what they wanna write. They just answer a few questions, it comes up with the drafts for them, they have the chance to edit or approve and it's all done. Okay, so that was a lot about solving problems and designing a specific workflow for your GPTs. Let's move to the next thing that you need to know before you start building custom GPTs. And that is the importance of designing the right inputs because when you are building custom GPTs or when you're using AI in general, the input directly reflects the quality of the output. So the quality of your system prompt for your GPT and the knowledge base that you give it is going to directly influence the output that it generates for you. This could be simple or complex, but it needs to be specific. And to explain this in plain speak, a system prompt is different different than the prompts that you see floating around the internet for your default chat GPT. It's still the same idea that it's designing how you want the GPT to generate an output, but a system prompt is basically like the workflow, the parameters, the boundaries, all of the things that it needs to know to do the job, like how that process is gonna go. So it's really the configuration of your GPT versus the knowledge base is all of the extra materials that it can reference to do a really good job. So if your system prompt is not clear or there's a lot of gaps where your AI tool could freestyle really because it's finding loopholes in the process or if it doesn't have a really solid knowledge base to draw from, it's just like a human. Like if it doesn't know what you want the output to look like, then it's going to try its best. So the better your knowledge base, the more specific your system prompt, then the better the result it's gonna generate. But then you may be wondering, what does your AI tool need to know in order to do its job well? This is where I like to think of all my tools, all my custom GPTs, as if I would consider a human team member. So I will give it a job description and I will give it all 
of the examples, the formatting preferences, the reasoning behind why I make certain decisions, anything that's backing up or supporting how they should go through each step in the process. I'm also gonna give it audience segments if that's relevant or frameworks to follow, anything that would help guide the direction. And then I reference this knowledge base directly in the system prompt so it knows what documents to look at at each stage of the process. So really if you're putting garbage into it, then you're gonna get garbage out of it, whether it is your default chat or a custom GPT or not. So to give you an example of this, we can look at a website copywriter that may have a fairly lengthy system prompt. So it's gonna go through competitor research with the user, it's gonna go through the website strategy, any audience segments it needs to know, brand voice and messaging, all of that kind of thing. But then there's also another layer of formatting preferences and what it should be asking throughout the process and the tone it should have while it's working with the user. So all of this stuff is really important too and that's gonna be into the knowledge base as well. So you could create a custom GPT and tell it that it is a website copywriter and it has however many years of experience and it's gonna help you draft website copy and it will try. But if you want it to follow a specific proven process, like maybe you are turning your own processes into custom GPTs, then you need to give it all of the rules throughout all of these steps and then the context to actually deliver something good at the end. I also change the knowledge base that I give the GPTs depending on who the user is of the GPT itself. So this leads to the third thing that you need to know before you are building any custom GPTs and that is who is going to actually be using this GPT. Are you using it yourself or is a team member going to be using it? Multiple team members, is a client gonna be using it? Like there are so many different ways you can structure your system prompts depending on who is using the custom GPT. The use case of your custom GPTs is going to shape the system prompts, the length, the style, the output that it's generating, the entire workflow really, and how you even want it to communicate with the user. So the ones that I'm using internally in my business, and maybe it's just me using it, I don't have a ton of extra things in the workflow or in the knowledge base about the tone that it needs to have with me because I don't really care about how it's talking to me as long as it's creating what I want it to create at the end and the quality that I want at the end. I do set parameters like I don't want it to just agree with everything that I say naturally because I want it to help me have some kind of discernment especially if it's something that's helping make decisions, but the tone doesn't matter so much. However, if it's gonna be a custom GPT that my clients are using, like my messaging strategist assistant that I've named Billy, and who has been a hit lately, which is really fun, that one has the tone embedded because I want Billy to feel like she is guiding my clients through a strategy session with me or with someone on my team. So the brand voice is there, the style, the tone, like. It all makes sense if you know me and you've worked with me, how Billy talks to you when you are using that to get started with your messaging strategy. So it's really elevating the client experience as well as helping get a job done and speeding up my process because then a client can come to me and they already have the basics there. And then that way we can dig into the deeper stuff when we actually get on our first call. To give you another example, the way that I've structured my brand messaging bot Billy is different than one that I've built for a client that is really similar on the outside, but the tone is different. The process is slightly different. Like there's so many ways we can tweak and personalize all of these things to make it make sense within your business. Along the same lines, the way that I have designed my personal website copywriter that is really just creating copy for my brand or really co-creating it with me is different than how I've set up the website copywriter that a client is using. This is because these function best when they actually fit your workflow and your business and your brand and you know who that end user is. In the same way that I'm making decisions to design the system prompts for custom GPTs that my clients are using, it's gonna be different if it's actually their clients who are using it at the end because we want it to match their brand and elevate that client experience for them. So there's just so many layers into this that you really need to know who is gonna be using this GPT and how can I make it as seamless as possible for them and make sense for my business? Okay, I feel like as usual, this was a lot. These videos always end up so much longer than I think they're gonna be. I'm like, this is gonna be a short one and then here we are. It's probably not a short one. We'll see how long it gets to. So let's recap really quickly. The three things that you need to know before you get started building custom GPTs are that you need to start with a clear workflow, Probably the one that is causing you the most pain right now will create the biggest impact for you. You need to have the right inputs. The better your inputs, the better your outputs from it. And you need to decide who that end user is in order to design a workflow that makes sense. So 
Like I said, it doesn't have to be complicated, but there is a process to follow if you want them to work how you want them to. And I really hope that you can get things like this to work for you because it just can help you grow so much faster by saving time on all of the busy work so you can do the more impactful stuff. For me, as a busy working mom, that means that I have more space to take on more clients because I'm not stuck in all the busy work and I can focus on doing more impactful things like strategy sessions and actually supporting my clients. So that's really cool and I'm really curious to see how something like this could help you grow your business too and just do more impactful work in your business too. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I am happy to help however I can and I have some helpful tools for you in the description as well if you wanna get started using your ChatGPT better, if you wanna talk about how to set up custom GPTs for your business and all that kind of thing, check the description below. So. As usual, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.